If we don't attack them, some other clan will. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to a Dayton Dissects of King of Dragon Pass. This is a text-based choose-your-own-adventure, uh, very tribal, and very cool. There was once a time when gods and people walked the earth together. Your clan traces its ancestry back to those times. So here's the recap screen of all the previous clan history. I added strangers to my clan as thralls. My ancient enemy is Bos Katan, the troll lord. I have a war clan. My first awakened goddess is Shalana Arroy, the healing goddess. My Attitude Torch Dragon was positive, positive, and we shared in their knowledge. We also have huge tract of land, far more than we may ever need. And now the game actually starts. This is your sacred time. You'll spend your magical reserve points in a variety of options. I usually like to go for crops and herds to make sure you have enough uh, food to feed your people. And then uh, some war and diplomacy, and we'll leave a couple in reserve. Your advisors will also talk to you about what they think you should do, and that mostly depends on which god they worship and uh, how old they are and things like that. Should certainly start a point or two in trade magic. No, we won't. All right, let us do the thing. So here is your clan overlook screen. You can reorganize the clan here and uh, assign different leaders. Look at the leaders you currently have. Uh, this will tell you what your clan mood is under under the uh, reorganize button. So everybody's reserved and resolved at the moment. You can uh, have a feast or give them gifts to increase their mood. You can also recruit more farmers. We currently have four sick farmers, which is not good. <laughs> we, we just started. Um, recruit more weapon thanes. Currently we have 12, which seems a little low. There's nobles, there's crafters. We could use some more crafters, but they have to be uh, attracted to the clan on their own. And so we also have some hunters. Eight hunters is probably not enough. Our wildlands can support up to 70 hunters. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll bump it up. So now we have a ton of hunters uh, available to go through our wild land, which that'll be covered when we go to the farming section. And then uh, you can also try to get thralls. Currently we cannot <laughs> recruit any more thralls. I could free some, but hell no. I love my slaves! Under clan magic you have farming. This uh, is used to redistribute cropland pastures and wildlands. And in a food emergency, you can also slaughter sheep, pigs, cattle, and horses. Uh, but usually you don't want to do that because then you won't be able to sacrifice, which is under the magic screen. Um, there are many, many gods and many, many different blessings that they offer. Moran Gore, the earthquake, earthquake goddess, offers uh, earth blood, which increases the fertility of the fields when people are killed on them. Or lamp, uh, we actually do have rain, which helps raise our crops, so that's pretty good. Urox is mostly about uh, war, so is Humacht. So if you want to be a warlike clan, you should probably worship those two gods. You got to start with the sacrifice to learn about each of the uh, blessings, and then you can build a shrine to make the blessing permanent. Apart from magic, you have relations with other clans. Obviously, there are a lot of clans out there, and you're going to need to be friends with most of them. You can scroll this up here to see who we have as an alliance, favors we owe, favors do, and uh, if we have any feuds, yeah. Six Brothers and Kadarvi. So we could raid them if we'd like, but we should wait until another season. Currently, it is Sea Season, which uh, is a season for planting, I believe. So... Under the relations, we have the trade, which is basically like relations, except you're, you know, taking your goods and exchanging them for other goods instead of just giving a gift to make people like you more. And then on the absolute opposite side, we have war. So here you can also recruit more weapon th things. You can uh, build some fortifications. The more fortifications you build, the more you get. Um, I believe there's like seven or eight to build. And then you can conduct a cattle raid, which is kind of a stealthy thing, or a full-blown attack, which is a raid, and uh, you'll end up, you know, possibly enslaving people from other clans, since my clan does believe in that. 
And it's it's a pretty interesting thing. I hope we'll uh, be able to cut some of that in as well. And then you also have the map. So, um, while the map is rather large, the main concentration of people is down here. I haven't found too much stuff, um, but you will occasionally encounter, like, beast men and stuff like that, bandits that will attack your exploration party. So it's super interesting. We have the, the lower screen, which will basically take you to, um, a steam, steam window kind of thing. So you do need to learn about these quests if you ever want to do the, uh, god quest. Which is basically sending one of your leaders into the realm of the gods to reenact um, whatever the story foretold. And sometimes you can get around without knowing it, but occasionally you'll lose different things. Like, um, I've made a bad choice and, you know, had some of my people die while I was in the realm of the gods because I made the wrong choice. I made an offer of blood or something, and that's not really what happened in the story. But at least I progressed. Um... I think it's kind of interesting that they have it set up this way. I would like to see something a bit more cohesive. Definitely, it would be better if it was all consolidated in the game. Overall, you won't be going to this screen too much unless you really are into the lore of this world. You have the uh, Saga, which is basically your journal. You can restore uh, older points of your journal if you feel you've made a huge mistake. Um, but overall, yeah, it's just to keep track of what you've done. And you have your manual, which is, um, back on the Steam screen and whatnot. It'll tell you all about the different kinds of magics, farming screen, relation screen, basically everything I just explained, except probably a little better than I explained it. <laughs> That's basically it. So, we are going to, uh, start this thing off, and I think I'm going to make a sacrifice to Humacht. You generally want to give your chosen god about 15 to 25 cows, and if you're trying to learn mysteries on the bottom here, um, yes, we've learned the oath ritual, which seals bonds between clans. So that is a good thing. We could sacrifice to another god as well. Currently, uh, we can't, we can't, um, get oath unless we build a shrine or sacrifice again to activate the blessing. Which is unfortunate. I suppose we'll sacrifice to the ancestors as well. Because, uh, they're good folk. They deserve to eat. We got the summons of evil ritual. Summon our ancient enemies so we can defeat them. Well, okay. Enathia, a trade of the Tanhart clan, comes to your Tula to offer you what she says is a great treasure. A great cloud of mist wrapped in a sheet of Israelian paper. Enathia says that when the papers burn, the mist will swirl out and allow us to hide on the battlefield. Hmm. Enothia has a reputation for sometimes making uneven deals. The fog that is mist will only, yes, I think, or... Items like this are fairly easy to make, but are used quickly. If you eat the paper, can you breathe mist? <laughs> Such an item would be useful in battle. I feel ready to haggle with her as long as we are certain of a maximum price. Hmm... Anothea does us a favor by making this offer. Even if we cannot afford a treasure, we must honor her. Offer to trade your treasure for the paper? What's our treasure? We'll give you 40 cows. Sadly, our price was not good enough for her, and she went on her way. Shame, that. It is now fire season! Yes! We've got a feud with the Kadarvi, and everybody seems to want to raid them, so, uh... We don't have enough warriors to defend ourselves. But fire season is traditionally the time for raids. Recruit a few more weapon things. Awesome. And, uh, we can go ahead and send them on a cattle raid. I don't want to leave my, my home undefended because they're saying that we don't necessarily have enough people. So the more we send, the more chance we have to get caught. So I'm sending a weapon thane and five footmen. And we did it! 31 cows. Woohoo! And we did a little better. We've got, uh, nine reserve magic as opposed to seven last year. So, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Crops, herds, and war. And we actually do have a lot left over, so... A little bit in diplomacy and health couldn't hurt, because we do have some people wounded. 
A scouting party discovers rich farmland not far from your stead. It is inhabited by strange beast folk who behave sort of like normal Arlanthi and call themselves the Rune Ducks. For once, both warriors and Carls agree. It will be a fine thing to drive these small inhuman creatures from this fertile valley and claim it as your own. If we don't attack them, some other clan will. Hmm. So should we be mean to them? Everybody seems to want us to be mean to them. Let's not be too bold. You never know what strange magic members of the elder races might wield. See, that's kind of along the lines I'm thinking. Demand the duck seed you half their lands. Oh, they're mad. We're being raided by the wound ducks. They slip past our, our patrols. Shit. They're upset. We'll use all our spare magic. Let's take some fucking captives. Yeah! Rune Ducks charged right into the trap we had laid for him. It was a nasty battle. Our magic helped carry the day. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take any captives. Couple weapon things killed. Fuck. They got us good. Stoutly, we defended swiftly. Did the ducks waddle from the battlefield? By right of the sword, we took all their land rather than the half we had asked for. Nobody worried much about where the surviving ducks might have fled to. Hell yeah! It was worth losing weapon things. Fuck them, but I do gotta hire some more. <laughs> a thrall owned by the Arnaldi clan stumbles onto your clan lands begging for help. We realize it's our lot in, li in life to serve, he says, but we can no longer serve the Anardali who treat us miserably. Even a thrall can only take so much injustice before we must rise up and strike a blow for freedom. It transpires that this thrall, or camp, incited a rebellion on the Elder Nali Tula. He and his fellow thralls killed several Elder Nali and fled to the woods. Outraised, Elder Nali Thrains are now pursuing them, seeking vengeance. Our people have always supported the taking of thralls. We should seize Orkanth and return him to the Elder Nali Tula. That seems like a good idea because then they will, they will like us. Offer to buy the rebellious thralls. Mm. I don't want murderers. But yeah, we could we could buy them. Normally it would cost us a mere five cows to buy each thrall, but since they need to be captured to be of any use, we can get them for less. I'll go. You only need to send a few warriors with me. Alright. You got it. Lorikon is told that there are seven rebellious thralls and that they're worth five cows apiece. Try and bargain them down. They're willing to accept as little as four cows per thrall. Do you accept? Hell yeah. What do you do now that you own the thralls? Hunt them down. <laughs> Duh! We did not find any of the escaped tr thralls. Some said we sent too many warriors to find them, and they were alerted to our approach each time we grew near to their hideaways. People complained we had wasted our money, and that we in effect pardoned wretched and rebellious thralls. They said this was against our tradition, that we were weakening our clan magic and dishonoring our ancestors. During our absence, Orkanth slipped away and rejoined his group. He and the other thralls soon melted into the landscape. We later heard they were so excited by this first success that they attacked a troll caravan and were eaten. Everyone. <laughs> I think we should go visit the Red Fox, for their hatred of the Pharaoh. We love the Pharaoh! Yes. I'll ask for some help from my eagle allies. They sent 25 warriors. We eluded Red Fox patrols, and our 13 weapon thanes and 128 footmen are facing only 6 weapon thanes and 70 spearmen. So let's, uh, plunder that shit. Maneuver and plunder. The Red Fox charge hit us before we could shift our lines. The Red Fox charge falters for a moment thanks to the heroic efforts of yours. Yesteria and the warriors to her right and left, but one by one the warriors surrounding Yesteria fall bleeding from wounds taken in the initial charge. Yesteria is cut upon the sword arm while trying to cover their withdrawal. If Yesteria rallies to break the Red Fox charge, you have a good chance of winning the battle, but she risks her life by continuing to fight. What should she do? Hmm. Rally and counter charge. Your Asteria was unable to rally any of our warriors and charge the enemy alone. The Red Fox has faltered from the force of Yeristeria's charge, but after the initial shock of impact, Yeristeria wounds slowed her down so that an Aroxy Berserker caught her in the side with an axe, and our champion fell dead. Wow! I've usually had champions die from old age. The battle didn't last long, our magic blew theirs away, but they were able to rally. We were driven off and had no opportunity to obtain booty. 
Due to our prompt healing, our auxiliaries kept six warriors from dying and bandaged five of the wounded. Three ducks enter the clan hall squawking furiously. The leader presents himself as Fangvale, a Humati death lord of the upland marsh. I'm tired of hearing your warriors laugh at us. I've spent my whole life killing undead so that you ignorant dirt farmers can sleep without waking up six feet un without waking up under six feet of marsh water. No more jokes. I challenge your finest warrior to a duel to the death. Let's see if you'll be laughing then. And don't bother sending out your hairy faces and healer women to try and talk me out of this. I'm not in the mood. Look at all those swords. Something bad is going to come of this. Let's accept the challenge. Who do you choose as your champion? A leader. Who's the best at combat? This lady. Go ahead, get in there, lady. Fangbell fought with two swords at once, aiming to catch Drenyan by surprise. Drenyan was hit once, but did not fall for the two swords trick, killing the Humakti with a blow to the head. Everyone agreed that it had been an impressive fight, and we allowed Fangbell's companions to take his body away with honor. Fuck yeah! Suck my magical dick, motherfucker! <laughs> Rumor has it a certain unmarried young man of the clan have been heading into the woods to visit a beautiful woman who doesn't dress or act like any Orlanthe. It may be that some married men have been with her, breaking the laws against adultery. We shall interrogate the men folk to see who has been with her! Three men admitted to having been with the woman who said th that she had eyes that were impossible to resist. What do you do? Admonish them. They admitted that they had been foolish and promised to learn from their mistake. Good. I'm proud of you. Oh, we fucked up hard with the magic ritual this last year because we... We missed out on those thralls. We let those thralls get away, so... That's rough. Wilms, one of the men who admitted to being with the mysterious woman of the woods, is stricken by a ghastly seizure. Plant tendrils burst out from his mouth, ears, and eyes and through his clothing. Within minutes, he is dead. Anyone who had contact with the woman of the woods must come forward! Two men admitted they had been with the woman, and they knew Wilms had been with her too. Let's sacrifice to Arnalda for help. Help us, Arnalda! Two Carls died. One of them was married, so we knew he had committed adultery with the woman of the woods. <laughs> that fucking wood woman. So, friends, this has been King of Dragon Pass by A Sharp and Herocraft. I did indeed enjoy my time with Dragon Pass. There are a few nitpicks that I do have, but those shall of course be covered in the score breakdown right now. So the controls, I've decided to give a 5 out of 10. I really have a pet peeve about uh, mouse-based games. Really, if there was any sort of keybind at all, I might give it a couple points more, but the only keybind that you have available is to exit the game. And to me, that is just not good enough. So 5 out of 10. Fun factor, I've decided to give it a 4 out of 10. It is a pretty fun game, however, uh, again, it's like a bit of a Netflix game. It's really hard to get pulled into it. Uh, but I guess that's good if you're sending people to a war to die. So, <laughs> I've given the fun factor a 4 out of 10. It didn't quite pull me in. Um, but it does have its own merits, such as the difficulty, which I've decided to give a 9 out of 10. It is an extremely difficult game. You start off with a clan, eventually you're able to form a tribe and uh, set up some rules for that tribe and negotiate with surrounding clans to get them to join the tribe. And of course, you're never going to make everybody absolutely happy all the time. So uh, you might have some usurpers in the clan and Benedict Arnolds and whatnot. So it's really an interesting dynamic. I love the politics in this game, and it really does keep me coming back for more. Along with the, the very high difficulty at a 9 out of 10, I have the replayability at an 8 out of 10. It took me about 6 or 7 hours to start seeing the same events again, and even then, reacting to them differently leads to uh, a different branch of the story, which I think is super cool, definitely keeps me coming back. Replayability. 8 out of 10. The innovation I've given a 5 out of 10. I've seen a lot, a lot of story-based games uh, similar to this simulation management style. This is the only one set in a medieval setting with uh, clans and worship of all the old gods and stuff like that. And I think it adds a really interesting twist. 
Uh, but I don't feel that it's innovative enough to score higher than the average, which is a 5 out of 10. The graphics I really, really enjoy. They kind of remind me of, like, those 70s or 80s uh, fantasy or sci-fi book covers, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It does look a little bit outdated, um, but overall, I think I really enjoy the graphics, so I've decided to give them an 8 out of 10. The music also friggin' really just jives with me. I love the old folksy feel of it, and uh, it, it, it never drops out, so... You can enjoy it the whole time, or you can go into options and shut it off if you hate it, but I, for one, really, really enjoy the music that they have in this game, so I've given it a 10 out of 10. The sound effects I've given only a 1 out of 10. There are not very many. There's sounds for when you go into battle, or when something bad happens, or when something good happens, but not a whole lot besides that. So I, f I find myself disappointed in the sound effects, which is a shame because the music is just so good. The story I've given a 10 out of 10, story and lore in this game is so deep, they've created an entire world, an entire uh, structure of gods, a pavilion of gods, or pantheon, yeah I think pantheon, um, but it's really really deep, it's super interesting, and uh, yeah, big nod to them for taking it to this extent, it's, it'll, it'll be able to suck you in through the story, I love the writing in this game. The level design I've decided to give a 6 out of 10. It's basically the same. You're in the same valley every single time, but the neighbors are randomized, and the feelings they have towards you are also randomized. And then, you know, depending on the alignment of your leadership council, you might influence friend or influence people to be your friends or your enemies. So, really cool with the level design. I like King of Dragon Pass a whole, whole lot, and I do see myself revisiting it quite soon. It did not score extremely great at a 66 out of 100. Divide that in half, that is 3.3 stars out of 5, which I guess is still uh, above the average, but uh, there's quite a few things that they could do to tighten it up a little more and make it something that I would run out and tell all my friends about. <laughs> so, this has been King of Dragon Pass, my friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator with another Dayton Dissects. If you did enjoy this episode, I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. And until the next time, friends. Bye-bye! One, two, three.